morning and welcome to the online worship service for April 18, 2021, Davie Street Presbyterian Church. Here are the morning announcements. Midday prayer will resume by Zoom this Tuesday at 12 noon. Sunday school will continue by conference call this Sunday at 10 a.m. with lesson text 1 John chapter 3 verses 1 through 10 and lesson title do what is right. Contact Mrs. Noble for more information. There is a Mother's Day fundraiser coming up. The Davy Street Presbyterian Church women are sponsoring a 2021 Pamper Me Mother's Day raffle. For $5 per ticket, you have an opportunity to win one of four prizes. A $50 gift certificate to Ruth Chris Steakhouse. A $50 gift certificate to the Angus Barn Restaurant. A gift certificate for a one-hour massage at Massage Envy Spa that will not expire, or an in-home spa basket featuring a robe, slippers, a bottle of wine, a Pier 1 three-wick candle, and assorted Mary Kay products. What woman would not appreciate any one of those gifts? Contact any woman church member between now and May 2nd to purchase tickets. The drawing will be held on May 8th. Winning numbers will be announced on our Facebook site. The Capital Campaign Committee will meet today at 2 p.m. by Zoom. A Zoom link has been sent to your email for those Capital Campaign members. There will be a drive-through for Mr. Glenn Little on Saturday, April 24th. The lineup will begin at 1 o'clock p.m by Mrs. Bryant's house on Cabarrus Street. The drive through will start at 2 o'clock p.m. Please contact the head of your organization if you would like to make a group contribution or recognition in order to commemorate Mr. Little's departure from Davie Street. That will be Saturday, April 24th. Lineup begins at 1 p.m. The drive through will start at 2 p.m. Jacqueline Bimbo, president of the Birthday Club, is issuing a friendly reminder to mail in your offering or contribution for the Birthday Club to the church. Please continue collecting your sensibility coins at home. Pouring them in the community pot can be part of our Together Again celebration when we're able to work, worship in this sanctuary. Please join us for intercessory prayer on Thursdays at 7 p.m. 15 for, by conference call. Please contact Bill or Maggie Thomas for more information. If you are experiencing a pastoral emergency, please contact the church secretary, Ms. Leah Harris, or Elder Felicia Hardy. The office is open from 1 p.m. to 4 p.m. on Thursdays and Tuesdays. Please call before coming. Regarding the John Chavis Community Center, there's a memory lane tour scheduled. Please join us in celebrating the life and legacy of the original John Chavis Community Center with a final farewell walking tour of the facility. Take a trip down Chavis's memory lane, visiting various rooms throughout the building, displaying memorabilia and souvenirs, highlighting a few examples of the people, programs, and activities that helped make John Chavis Memorial Park the place to learn and play from the 30s to today. Attendees will have an opportunity to share their own memories of Chavis and will receive a special keepsake. Tours will take place Monday, April 12th through Sunday, April 19th, 2021. Tours are free and will be offered in time blocks. See the church bulletin for contact information or contact Chavis Community Center. COVID-19 vaccinations. Effective April 7th, 2021, the Duke Raleigh Hospital is accepting a weekly basis, on a weekly basis, requests regarding the COVID-19 vaccinations for individuals who are 16 years old and older. Again, please see the bulletin for further information and contact information. Thank you. Good morning, brothers and sisters of Jesus Christ. 
I'm Reverend Willem Bodis Komastik, and I'm thankful that I can be with you this morning. Let us prepare ourselves for worship. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth, whose steadfast love endures forever, and who never forsakes the works of his hands. Grace to you and peace from God the Father, from Jesus Christ, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let us worship God. Please join me in the responsive reading for the call to worship. Let all the world hear the good news. Christ is risen and lives. Christ died on the cross, yet now Christ, Christ lives and reigns today. And in the resurrection we have the promise of God's eternal salvation. Because God, God truly cares about our lives here, here and, and now until Christ returns to be among us. Therefore, let the whole world hear the sounds of joy and praise for our loving God. Blessed, Blessed be the name of the Lord. Lord. Let's bow our heads for the prayer of the day. Loving God, who has reached out to us through your Son, Jesus the Christ, to restore our souls, touch us now with your word of truth. May the familiar phrases of Scripture draw us back into a vital relationship with you and all your children. Lead us in the paths of righteousness that we may show your love in all our conversations and actions in the name of the risen Christ. Amen.
the call to confession. Let all who fear God pause to consider their covenant with the Creator God and their relationship with persons God has given us to love. We are called to rule justly, share generously, and serve cheerfully. Let us recognize together how we have been unsuccessful in our attempts to live by God's intent. Let us confess our sins publicly and then in silence privately. Please join me in the prayer of confession. God of our ancestors, God of today, we come to you in the name of Jesus, who lived among us, confessing that we have not been faithful to your purposes. We abide in sin, disdaining the ways of the one who came to take our sin away. We confess, merciful Father, that we do not really know Christ or aspire to follow the path of loving service. Heal our brokenness, O oh God, and bring together the fragments of our scattered existence into a meaningful whole. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. The Lord is merciful and gracious, for as the heavens are high above the earth, so great is God's steadfast love toward those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far does he remove our transgressions from us. And that is the good news we may hear. Amen. And now, let us share the peace with one another. The peace of Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you.
hearts and minds for the reading of the scripture as we bow our heads for the prayer of illumination. Almighty and everlasting creator God, we give you thanks this day for all of those with whom we share the mystery and wonder of Resurrection Day and of your kingdom in this place. May we seek to be an encouragement to one another in the hearing and doing of your word. We are grateful for those in other times and places who through much love, patience, and understanding led us to the gospel, your saving word in Christ. To be stewards of this word in these tumultuous times, in any time, is a high calling. We can accomplish this task with the power of the Holy Spirit. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who with the Father and the Holy Spirit are one God. Amen. Our first reading from the Word of God is from Acts chapter 3, verses 12 through 19. When Peter saw it, he addressed the people, You Israelites, why do you wonder at this? Or why do you stare at us? As though by our own power or piety we had made him walk. The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our ancestors has glorified his servant, Jesus, whom you handed over and rejected in the presence of Pilate, though he had decided to release him. But you rejected the Holy and Righteous One and asked to have a murderer given to you. And you killed the author of life, whom God raised from the dead. To this we are witnesses, and by faith in his name, his name itself has made this man strong, whom you see and know. And the faith that is through Jesus has given him this perfect help in the presence of all of you. And now, friends, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did also your rulers. In this way, God fulfilled what he had foretold through all the prophets, that his Messiah would suffer. Repent, therefore, and turn to God, so that your sins may be wiped out. This ends the reading of the word. Thanks be to God. Our second reading is taken from the Gospel of, of Luke, chapter 24, the verses 36 through 48. Hear the word of the Lord. While they were talking about this, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, Why are you frightened, and why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is myself. Touch me and see, for a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when they had said, when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. 
While in their joy they were disbelieving and still wondering, he said to them, Have you anything to eat for me? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate in their presence. And then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to pro pro proclaimed in his name to all the nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are my witnesses of all these things. Here ends the reading from God's word. Blessed are all those who hear the word of the Lord and keep it. Hallelujah. One day, a number of years ago, when I was still living in upstate New York, I was driving home from Oneonta to Walton, going up Oneonta Mountain, which is a pretty steep hill. Just as I had gone through the left curve in the road, I saw a motorcyclist coming towards me, and he had great speed. And when I saw that, I thought by myself, he's going too fast for the conditions. And I was driving on, I was watching him through my rear view mirror, and lo and behold, it happened as I suspected. He lost control and slipped over the median of the road and hit an oncoming car. Rear wheel. I stopped, got out of my car, looked and checked out what was going on, and this man was very lucky. If the car had not been there, he would have slipped through over the hill, down the hill. But because he hit the rear wheel of the driver's side, he just had bruises and some bumps. I gave the driver of the car my telephone number and told her I would be a witness if necessary. So about a month later, the driver of the car called me if I wanted to testify as a witness of this accident because the motorcyclist had claimed that to the police that she had crossed the median and not the cyclist. Of course, I agreed to be her witness in court, and of course, she won the case. Witnessing. Nowadays, things are quite a bit different. We have cameras in our car. To make pictures. And then there is this young 17 year old girl, this teenager, who took the pictures of Floyd, George Floyd. She had the wherewithal to tape the whole murder incident of George Floyd on her cell phone. Nine minutes and 29 seconds long. The whole tape or segments of it, one of you may have seen yourselves. And during the court case last week, uh, the medical experts for the prosecutors used that tape to show, by time, what happened to Mr. Floyd. These things happen now all the time. People taking movie shots of traffic accidents, or protest marches, or birthday parties, or weddings, you name it. What a way to become a witness. There is something special about being a witness. 
First, a witness sees. Secondly, a witness has to be willing to become involved. And thirdly, a witness is willing to speak. These last two are crucial. Let us go back to the gospel lesson for today. Uh, in the last verse of Luke's uh, gospel passage, at the end of the passage, Jesus says to his disciples, You are my witnesses of these things. And of course they were. For three years long, these disciples had seen a lot and had learned a lot while in the presence of Jesus. They saw healings. They saw feeding of thousands of people. They saw Jesus walking on the water. They also were part of an interesting conversations, Jesus with the religious leaders. They saw Jesus raising Lazarus from the dead. And of course, they were present at the Last Supper with Jesus. They also had seen the crucifixion and glory of glorious. They had become part of the resurrection. And that is a lot to take in. You are witnesses of these things, Jesus said. Yes, they had seen it all. Step one. In my own case, I had seen with my own eyes that the motorcyclist crossed the median. And I had a feeling that that was not going to be the end of it. I could have walked away from that incident. I could have gone back to my car and had driven home. But my gut feeling told me, get involved. Here is my phone, lady. That's step two. And about two months later, in court, I took hold of step three. The lady was very thankful for my willingness to be a witness. The disciples had to make a decision when Jesus said to them, you are witnesses. Are we going back to the lake? Are we going back to our boats and, 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 and nets? And Oh yes, the fish were waiting. At least for Peter and Andrew, for James and John. Or whatever else the other eight disciples had been doing before they had answered the call, follow me. Now they had to make that decision, that important decision, are we going to take the next step? In following Jesus, are we going to be witnesses? I'm sure you're all familiar with the Negro spiritual, were you there? We just sang the last verse of that spiritual. Were you there when they crucified the Lord? Were you there when they laid him in the tomb? Were you there when he rose from the grave? Now what is your answer to that question? Were you there? Of course you can say, oh no, I wasn't there. How can it be? That happened 2000 years ago. I was not alive at that time. And I can agree with you if you have that kind of response. But I also totally disagree with you. Why? Because we have the New Testament. The New Testament is step two and three of what it means to be a witness. The disciples have followed Christ's command. You are witnesses of these things. 
The disciples were not speculators or philosophers or, or moralists or legislators. No, they were witnesses. And their business was to tell the truth. And they did. Just read the Acts of Apostles. Although it all starts actually with the last verse, last verses of the Gospel of Matthew, where we can read, Go therefore and make disciples of all nations and baptize. Oh, and did they get involved? They did what Jesus did. They healed. They were persecuted. And the disciples were put in prison by the high priest. But they could not be stopped. They were filled with the Holy Spirit as it came down on them on Pentecost Sunday. As Jesus had promised them that, he would, that they would receive the Holy Spirit. They, speak, they spoke freely about Jesus Christ, about his work, and what Christ had done among them. They spoke about his suffering and about his death on the cross. And they were pointing fingers to the religious leaders about all of that. And that Jesus rose from the dead after three days for the salvation of, of the world and reconciliation with God. And they baptized. And their numbers were growing. And they just didn't stay in Jerusalem. Oh no, the disciples began to travel throughout Judea and, and Samaria and Galilee. And then Paul came along. Paul could not be stopped. Talking about being a witness, he was driven by the Holy Spirit. And by the time he ended up in Rome, as a prisoner for Christ, there were now groups of followers of Jesus Christ in Ephesus and Athens, Corinth and Philippi, Colossus and Rome, and places in between. And then there are the Gospels. They were written as an other form for witnessing. People could read now with their own eyes and observe it with their own minds what the gospel writers themselves had seen and heard either in persons when they were with Jesus or had been handed down the good news to them by the disciples who had seen and heard it all who embraced Christ's words and claimed, we are witnesses to these things. And so throughout the centuries, generations upon generations of Christians have followed in the footsteps of those first witnesses, closed with the power of the Holy Spirit, even today. And let us not rely on machinery, let us not rely on externals, let us not rely on, on cheap advertising tricks, which might do very well for a short time. But they're all out of harmony with the work that we have to do. And certainly let us not fool ourselves by trying to accomplish a great deal of fuzzy activities, which calls itself Christian earnestness, but lacks the Spirit of God in it. Therefore, if we truly want to stand in the footsteps of those first witnesses to whom Christ said, you are my witnesses of these things, we have to continue this work. You see, a witnessing Christian should be a believing Christian. And whosoever is a believer should be a disciple and a witnessing one. For that matter, which means you can't allow yourselves to get stuck at level one. 
You have to keep moving to step two. Get involved in your church, in your community, in the world. Your actions in Christ's name could already speak for themselves, could do already wonders. But also use your voice, step through, proclaim the good news, bear witness to the fact that Christ is in your life. Yes, indeed, the call to witness comes as straight to you as well as to me, as it did to the young Pharisee almost 2,000 years ago on the road to Damascus. When he heard the voice calling from heaven, Saul, Saul, and it changed his life. It changed the world. Let us continue the work of being witnesses for Christ. Amen. And let us now turn, and if you're able, you can stand up or you can sit down wherever you are, to affirm our faith. We believe in God, our Creator and Redeemer, whose rule is over the whole universe. We also believe that God is love, and God's love was perfectly revealed to us when God sent His Son, Jesus Christ, into the world. We believe that God destined His Son to be the Savior of all humankind by making him the pure and sufficient sacrifice that took away our sins through his death on the cross and restored us to wholeness through his resurrection from the dead. We believe that God dwells within us by the power of the Holy Spirit and within the community of this Spirit, God calls us to be the Church of Jesus Christ and to love and serve one another for Christ's name's sake. Amen. Amen. Let us be in an attitude of prayer. Holy God, who has created us and knows our every thought and mood, we set aside this quiet time from our busy lives to give thought to our relationship with you and your love for us and to reflect upon the meaning of our lives. In acknowledging your love for us and our love for you, we, may we also fulfill the necessity of loving our brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ. We are doing this, O oh God, with these prayers of intercession for the people of God. <clears throat> Therefore, loving parents, we intercede this day for all those who are dear to us, because we know that you intend that life should be good and filled with happy moments and joyful relationships. But we are pained when we see those who, 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 for whom we care sorrowing, ill, troubled, in conflict, or misunderstood. Enable us to be helpful and supportive in their time of need. We pray, O oh God, for those who are lonely, poor, blind, have no clothes, or are hungry, or homeless. Bring comfort to them, Lord of love, and grant that this day their needs may be supplied in and through you. We pray for the Church of Jesus Christ. May it ever hold first place among the institutions of the world and may it speak so that to be understood and heeded by all the peoples of the earth. We pray for our nation and its leadership. May your power be their power and to make this earth a better place for all to live. Let not the darkness people have created dim lights of peace you have set in your world. To the contrary, O God, fill us with your peace that passes all understanding. And when we are filled with peace, 
sent us out to be peacemakers and witnesses in a world where brothers and sisters are pitted against each other. And so may each of us, we pray, be girded with Christ-like power and may we use this power, O God, purposefully to witness to your commonwealth, which we have experienced this morning. Let us pray together. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Remember these words from scripture. For God so loved the world that God gave his only son so that everyone who believes in him may not perish but have eternal life. Let us receive our tithes and offerings. bow our heads now for the prayer of dedication. O oh God, giver of every good and perfect gift, in gratitude we lay these tithes and gifts before you. With these offerings we consecrate ourselves to your service. Use us and that which we have given of our substance for your mission and ministry in the world. This we pray in the name of your one priceless gift, Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord. Amen. The service is ended, but your service now begins. Show the world that Christ is alive within you and around you. Do the work 
a witness for which Christ called you and his grace and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit and the, and the power of Jesus Christ be with you today and forevermore. Amen.